Well, let's take a look at the analysis services-based tasks in SSIS. Let me go ahead and say this. If you aren't using SSAS, and it's SQL Server Analysis Services, and your goal right now is to learn integration services, we'll skip this one. Okay, go on and learn the next ones because this is specific. This particular video is specifically for people who need to work with analysis services. It won't really help somebody who today has to take a Microsoft Access database and upload it to SQL Server. Maybe it'll help you in the future, but right now there may be other things you need to focus on. So it's okay to skip it is all I'm saying. Now, I'm assuming that if you're still listening to me, that you care about the analysis services side of things. Well, let me just say this. This is going to be an overview video, and I'm going to get into two of the main tasks, how to execute DDL and how to process cubes. These will be two things that you will probably be doing fairly often inside of SSAS slash SSIS. We are going to, though, go into much, much more detail in Chapter 6. We've got a whole real-world scenario where we have to process a cube and we have to make all kinds of design decisions. So this is somewhat of an overview. As the title of this chapter implies, it's a tour of the tasks. Let's just take a look at it, kind of get a feel for what it is, what it does, and how we use it. So let me go ahead. I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead first off and just create an empty uh, Visual Studio solution for business intelligence. So it's not going to matter anything. I'm not going to include my DTS package with this video. I do have several other files that are included in the zip file for this video, but the, the actual SSIS component is going to be trivial. However, Here's the thing. In SSAS, it's not just a, a, as easy as doing a, a database and snapping into and restoring the AdventureWorks database and having a bunch of queries to run against it. There's a little more complexity that has to go with this. So here's what I have set up for this video. Let me write it down here uh, and show you what I've done. So. Prior to getting started with us here, I did this. I downloaded and installed the SQL Server samples. Now, we did this way back in Chapter 1. Okay, we, we went ahead and we installed the samples and we talked about how to get AdventureWorks and AdventureWorks 2008 DW and all of that done. So I've already done that. Now, Step 2 is I installed analysis services onto my machine. So if you haven't done that, it's simply a matter of going back through the setup and adding the, for me, I added this as a feature, quote unquote, to the default SQL Server instance so that my analysis services server is part of the default instance. So I'll just put in added to default instance. And then that's, that's really, if you did those two things, then you're good. You're actually able to continue with me in this video if you wanted to follow along and do this from home, so to speak. Now, I make, you have to make sure that in step number one, the sample databases, you've installed them, and they're actually on your server. You haven't just downloaded them and they're sitting on a file somewhere. You, uh, you can go browse in the integration server, I'm sorry, I'll do it here. You can go browse using the Management Studio. Let me just pin that to my Start menu. You can connect up to your server, like I'm connecting to my database engine, and you can see the sample databases there. I mean, they're, they're live. The one that we're going to particularly use for this video is the AdventureWorks DW 2008. And if you watched our sections in chapters 1 and 2 in this course, you'll understand the relationships here that this is the relational data warehouse that our analysis services cube will be built from. So if this is a little bit odd to you, it might be helpful to go back and review some of those videos from chapters 1 and 2 where we talked about the ETL process and some of the common terms that you needed to know in data warehousing. Okay. So I've installed number, uh, I've done number one, which is uh, install the samples. I know that I've installed the samples. When I look over here, you can see in my start menu, I have this SQL Server 2008 community and samples. 
and when I go through it and I drill into it here I actually get a link and when I go to that link there's a samples folder and I can see sorry about this I can see all of my samples so I've installed both the samples here and the samples in my database the AdventureWorks databases now, step number two, how do you know if you have an, uh, the analysis services component installed? Well, the easiest way for me is to go to SQL Server 2008, go to Configuration Tools, and just simply uh, choose the Configuration Manager, and it will point you to whether that's an installed service. So I will just go ahead and run mine. It's already in my Start menu there. And when I go to the services, this is what I need to look at right here. The services, you can see it right there. It's an installed service, SQL Server Analysis Services. So if you don't have that as an installed service, or if this is uh, not running, you notice mine is running, so if yours says stopped or paused, then you need to get that into the running state before we can really proceed. Okay. So I'm assuming from this point forward, you, you don't have to follow along. I know I imply that, hey, you should be doing all this. It's completely cool to just watch. Now, back into my management studio. I'm going to make a connection to analysis services. And you could take a look. There are no databases in here. So a default installation of analysis services is just basically an empty analysis services. Well, let's fix that. Attached in this video is a zip file called MIS01, and you need to extract it. And it's going to have two things. It's going to have a folder called MIS01, and it's going to have a SQL file. First thing we need to do is I'm going to open up the folder, and I'm going to open the Visual Studio solution. Now, I've got this on my desktop, so if it matters, if it helps it. This is really from the samples. So if you have trouble doing this, all it is, you can go to the samples that, oh, easier to go this way, go through your community samples here, click on samples, analysis services, tutorials, and I just picked the one from lesson two. And all I did was rename it to fit Miss One so that it would fit this particular video. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the DS, the data source here, you don't have to know all the details about analysis services to make this work for you. But what we can see is that when we look at where it's connecting, it's connecting to our SQL server. It's using us as a relational fact storage, a relational data warehouse. And we're using the local host. And we're also using that AdventureWorks. Let me just scroll down here and make sure you see that. The AdventureWorks 2000, uh, AdventureWorks DW 2008. Okay, so that's why I was pointing that out earlier. We are going to connect to that database as part of building our cube. Okay. Now, you may not understand analysis services and how things work. So let's do a 20 second guide to analysis services development. Uh, let's, it's probably easier to write it out uh, over here. And for some reason, I'm not getting my little uh, tool there. Sorry about that. So, and T. I wasn't pressing the right key. So, the 20 second guide to analysis services development. You want to build an analysis services cube. So, step one, you create a Visual Studio uh, analysis services project. And I spelled that wrong. And then you create a cube, plus you create your measures and dimensions with that cube. So right now, you're only in the development environment. Okay, it's uh, akin to working with SSIS and just being in a debug environment inside the Visual Studio here. Okay? You have not deployed the cube. Once you're ready, then you deploy the cube to analysis services, SQL Server analysis services. And then periodically, you process the cube here. And really does have to be processed before we deploy it. But uh, this is a, and this will be a repeatable, repeated forever maybe. I don't know how often you would actually uh, repeat that. But that's kind of your four-step process to working inside of analysis services. 
So I've already done step one, so we can check that one off the list. I've already done step number two, and I've given those to you in this Miss01 folder. So just by opening up the solution file, that's the sln file, dot sln, that has completed steps one and two. So what we actually have to do then is steps three and four. So here's all, it's actually fairly simple. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to deploy, learn it first. Right? So deploying it is actually going to hook it up to our analysis services server. And we can actually see over here the deployment progress. Oops, sorry about that. Um, that didn't work out like I'd hoped it would. Uh, but you can see where it will be deploying it. It has put it into this server and it is creating a database called Learn It First. So this is inside of Analysis Services it's going to create a database called Learn It First. It is now processing the cubes and it has now completed. Okay, so green is very good here. You like that at the very bottom that it was success. <laughs> yes, yes you do, trust me. <laughs> um, uh, once we have that done, now let's go back to our management studio and I'm going to close it down just to show you how to get here in case I might have lost you before. I know this is a lot of upfront work. We're not even talking about SSIS yet, are we? So I come over here and this time I want to connect to analysis services. So I connect and there we go. Now there is our Learn It First database and there's our Learn It First cube. And if you are familiar with working with pivot tables or working with cube browsers, you can use the, the rudimentary cube browser built into the management studio. So you could come over here and say, I'd like to see um, how many orders people have made and what the total amount they paid. And I want to do that by, uh, what would we get, total number of children. So we can see here the total, we've made 60,398 orders for this total amount. And there's your data distribution between the number of children. And then I could drag some more columns as well. So I could come over here into the measures and I could say the product um, color. So we could like break it out by color. So we now could look at how many we've sold. So by black, uh, blue, uh, multicolored, no color etc. Right? Fancy, pretty cool way to do it. You can select up here that you want to browse and say, um, I'm only interested in customers that are in the city of, and I have no idea, I'm from Dallas, maybe Dallas is in here, I have no clue. Um, I haven't looked at this data. There's Dallas, maybe, the, hopefully there's an order in there for Dallas. No, <laughs> well, maybe New York. Uh, let's see if New York City has any orders. That would be logical that it would um nope ah well but that's how you filter <laughs> should have picked a different one um maybe if we filtered by color i do want to show you this here let's um let's change this to product name and change it filtering by class and say that the class would be large so we're only i'm guessing an l means large there um, and okay, that does actually change it there. That changes it pretty significantly. So this is our cube browser, right? All right, so let's take, um, let's bring in integration services into this now. Okay, if you don't know about the concept of what processing the cube is, I, you know what, let's hold off on processing. Let's do processing last.